Today I'm going to talk to you about warts. The wall wart variety. You know these little plug-in transformers that uh, step down the mains voltage to 6 or 12 or 18 or whatever voltage your device requires. And these units do wear out after a while. Now, you might think, why would I even talk about trying to repair one of these things when you can buy a new one? And, and, and yeah, you, you can get these things quite reasonable. But the big problem is most of these linear wall warts have been replaced by that, the inverter. And these come in different shapes and sizes. There's a lot of them now that look just like a wall wart. I'll show you one. So here's a replacement wall wart that I bought to replace this nice big plug-in transformer. Now, they're both rated the same. Actually, this wall ward is rated higher. This is 1.5 amps at 12 volts, center tip positive. This one's 800 milliamps, center tip positive. The difference between the two of them is this one's an inverter, this one's a linear transformer. Now, you're wondering, what's the difference, right? DC 12 volts is DC 12 volts. Well, yes and no. You see, on your conventional AC adapter, this is a transformer, uh, basically four diodes and a capacitor. It's unregulated. The voltage can vary anywhere from maybe 10 to as much as 15 volts, depending on the incoming voltage. This is designed for products that don't really give a crap about the regulation of the voltage, but they do need that current handling capability that a transformer will deliver. Whereas these units here are very well regulated and they give you an exact voltage, but the problem is if you're using a device that, um, say like an analog video modulator, which is what this is used in, well, these ones just don't work. In fact, my video modulator itself, I can plug it in on this unit, and the, the, the power light just kind of flickers a bit, and it never, ever starts up, and I can't use it. So, in those cases, I have to replace it with one of these linear adapters. The problem is finding these linear adapters is getting tough these days because a lot of companies don't make them anymore. Everybody's gone to these inverters because they're, they're dirt cheap to manufacture. A couple components, a couple transistors, a couple small capacitors, a very small transformer. They're very energy efficient and they're cheap to make, whereas this has got a big transformer. So what we're going to do is we're going to open this unit up and we're going to replace the capacitor in there. Now you have to be careful when you open these up because they are glued together and you have to kind of work your way around here. Get, get a screwdriver and stuff in here and you can pry the case open. They're, they'd open up fairly easy, just give it a little bit of a pry and the case will open up just like that. And what we're going to find is we're going to find a single capacitor inside here, a big transformer. The unit comes apart just like that. Well, what's going to be the point of failure on this unit? It's going to be this capacitor. So we're going to change this capacitor, and that's the purpose of this video. We're going to change a single capacitor in here, and then this transformer is going to work like it did the day it was new. We'll put it back together. We'll put a bit of glue on here just to glue it back together, and the thing will be good as new for several more years, and I can go back to using my analog modulators for some of my off-air uh, TV receivers that I have, and uh, everybody will be happy. But uh, that's in the case where you can't sometimes replace a good old linear transformer with one of these inverters. I've tried two different ones. I tried this one here which is a separate uh, with a separate power cord. This one's rated two and a half amps. It didn't work either. And this one didn't work but I guarantee you when I replace that capacitor this will work because the modulator is working with this one. It's just got uh, it's just got humbars scrolling through the picture so I know the problem is the filter capacitor is getting weak. So let's go about and change this. So today the reason why you're seeing me working on this little bench here which I've got absolutely no space is because my main bench has got a 42 inch TV on it that I fixed for a customer who has neglected to come and pick it up yet. You know one of the things about uh, being in the business is that uh, you're at the mercy of people when they want to come and pick things up and I don't have a lot of space to store it so right now it's sitting on my workbench waiting to get picked up. So I'm stuck with working on this little this is actually a cart and the, the TV you see sitting behind this one is actually my set. Another TV that was given to me um, a few months or I guess a month or so ago. That was the Panasonic with the 12 blinks of the uh, power light that I repaired a few a, a month or so ago. That's actually my set, this one here that you see in the background. That's my plasma now. I just haven't uh, found a place to put it yet. I had to make a makeshift base to uh, 
hold it up because I didn't get the stand for it. Okay, here's the original capacitor. This was originally blue, believe it or not, when it was new. Um, it's discolored because of the heat that's been involved in this thing. It's a 1000 microfarad at 25 volts. I don't think I'll have a problem finding one of those. Let me go get one. Of course, when you're dealing with electrolytic capacitors, uh, the polarity is important. This is the old one here. I'll get rid of that one so that I don't put it back in by mistake because it looks kind of the same color. It's brown, but this one actually used to be blue at one point. Here's the new ones I've got, and I've just actually taken them out of one of those inverters I just showed you. One of those new inverters that won't uh, power up my modulator. They had two 1000 microfarad 25 volt capacitors in them, which it just happens to be the same rating. So I sacrificed one of those. Um, inverter type power supplies to fix my two linear power supplies. So I'm just going to take the uh, parts and just put them back in. Remember your polarity is, is important. The negative terminal is indicated by the white here and also you can see the positive negative wire for the for the, the terminals for the wires being soldered on. So that's a dead giveaway there. We'll just place the new component into the board and solder it in place. Now keep in mind if your power supply is completely dead and there's no voltage coming out of it at all there is an internal fuse on the winding here. It's actually built into the winding on this one. It's right here. It's a little temperature fuse here. If the power supply were to overheat for any reason, that fuse would go open and then the transformer is shot. But So this only works if the if the adapter is actually still functional and you, all your, your problem is just caused by uh, excessive ripple. And the voltage dropping, for example, then you can, you can fix them this way, which is the case for both of these adapters. Both of them still function. It's just that the performance of them is not very good because of high excessive ripple current and the regulator in the device that it's plugged into is not able to cope with that excessive ripple so we're just replacing the main filter here that'll re that'll eliminate the ripple and uh, will allow me to reuse these things So once I've got the new capacitor soldered in, I can just reassemble the unit. Transformer just slips down inside and our cord goes in here and then it's got to get some glue. I'm not going to use something like epoxy or anything to tack this on because then I'll never be able to get into it in the future if I have to replace that again. I'm just going to put a dab of uh, super glue on here, just a little spot on either side just to hold the cabinet together and we're good as new. That's how you recap a linear power transformer, a plug-in class 2 transformer, an AC to DC transformer and uh, say the reliability of these things is very good, much better than any inverter. Uh, it's a shame that these are getting harder to find. Um, I'm sure there are still some out there um, but they are getting harder and harder to find these days as the industry has moved to the inverter type just for cost and efficiency reasons. And we can probably blame the EU for that. We can blame them for everything else. We can blame the EU for the lead-free solder and the uh, unreliable products that we're seeing these days because of the lead-free solder. It's all this uh, ROHS BS, reduction of hazardous substances that uh, all the manufacturers are forced to uh, adhere to. And it certainly is not improving things for the consumer as far as reliability goes. Hope you enjoyed this quick video and thanks for watching.